Hi, you're listening to the Big Sound Small Town Podcast. I'm your host, Sandy Carlton, and this is about all the big sounds from a small town perspective. And we are brought to you by Defiant Whiskey, distilled in beautiful Golden Valley, North Carolina. Okay, I'm in a coffee shop somewhere in uh, uh, Tryon, North Carolina, with Sean Camp. And we're going to do a short interview here. All right. So let's start with you worked hard this weekend. I mean, you've been here, caught your show yesterday. You're a one-man deal. Earl Lester's a couple times. Is it harder for you to do an individual show or a band show? Uh, it's just different, you know. I mean, uh, it's it's easier to play with a, with a band that, that's... Uh, that, you know, you, you know what you're going to do. Like True. the Earls of Leicester, we only do Flat and Scruggs stuff from True. 1954 to 1969. So everything we do, uh, you know, we, we're not going to do anything that's uh, unexpected too much. Well, you this know. is true, and you've had time to hone that, yeah. I mean, over, over your whole career for the most part. I right. Mean. And I, my songs, like I never know what I'm doing. I don't even have a set list most of the time. Yeah. I might have a bunch of song titles laying on the floor right. on a... On a you know, a, a grocery sack or something right. that I've scratched down there. But just, just to glance at it, if I get stuck and right. can't think of something, I'll just pull a song well, title. Your, your career is so varied, though. I mean, you went there as a totally to Nashville as a totally different artist than what you've become. Actually. I have. It's morphed into something different. I I moved there as a fiddle player. I, I knew. That's why I wanted to ask. Yeah. Sis Draper is real. Yes, she was. She was a real life lady in Arkansas, and and before I ever met her, my grandpa and my uncle Cleve, they were brothers. Uh, uh, the Camp Brothers, they uh, they used to always tell me about Sis Draper because I was starting to play music as wow. a little kid, you know. And so they said, boy, you really better get to practice and if you're going to play with Sis Draper when she comes through because uh, she don't just play with anybody. Oh, so I kind of had my... I, I, it was like I, I was a little nervous about playing with her the first time. I'm sure time, you, you were, know? yeah. And she showed up, you know, with a big beehive hairdo and a fiddle in a coffin case and pulled it out and played all these old time tunes and, you know in my mind she was a superstar from yeah. the get go and I guess I was about seven or that's eight how, years that's old that's how old I was getting ready to ask you how yeah. old you were when that happened yeah I, I think I was probably about seven when I when I met her and uh, I saw her a few times that year and we, we went to a picking party at a neighbor's house under the carport and she was there and she asked me for my autograph the first time anybody ever asked me for an that's autograph cool. was Sis Draper and uh, so um, I thought, well, I don't even have an autograph, right. you know. I'm just a, just a little old kid, you know. But uh, that's the first autograph I ever signed. And uh, you is know, she a larger than life figure. For she you? really was, you know. Uh, because you you made her infamous, if if nothing else, you know. Well, yeah, we. I mean, we kind of we've kind of uh, taken a little bit of uh, artistic. You of know, course. freedom with the whole deal, and we've yeah. made up some stuff that goes sure. with it. But, but I just recorded the whole Sis Draper project yeah. last Thursday. Well, that's what I was. That's that was going to be my very yeah. next uh, question. Can so, you talk about that. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to you All about. Right. It. I don't know what it, when it's coming out right. or anything about yes. it, but I haven't even actually heard the playback yet. So yeah. we just recorded thirteen songs, and uh, we listened. Some of them we, we listened to them back, you know. But I've got a I've got a lot of work cut out for me just going through and sure. editing and, oh, and yeah. mixing and stuff but um, that's all songs I co-wrote with Guy Clark and right. I did include New Cut Road which he wrote by himself yeah, sure. and that, that that song was a real inspiration to me as a 15 year old when I started playing fiddle right. I heard Bobby Bear's record on the radio yeah. and Ricky Skaggs playing fiddle on it and it just inspired me to try to play fiddle and uh, oh, I had no idea Guy Clark wrote it until I got to meet Guy later it did I uh, but you went to Nashville as a fiddler, did you not? I went there uh, in January of 1987 as the Osborne Brothers, new yeah. fiddle player, replacing Blaine Sprouse. Oh, yeah, I know Blaine. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Blaine was going to law school, and I think actually they were just waiting for Glenn Duncan to quit Jim and Jesse. They yeah, wanted Glenn. I was 20 years old and green, and I was a pretty good fiddle player, but I wasn't no, I wasn't a Glenn Duncan at that point. At that point, yeah. And, uh, you know... Uh, you still it, fiddle? I do, but there's just so many great fiddlers. I'd rather hear somebody that's well, good. I can play, and I like playing. It's a I play more of like a blues fiddle. It's not like a. 
I mean, Bobby Hicks was my one of was my yeah, fiddle I, hero. I knew Bobby really well. Yeah, yeah, me too. And I, I mean, I, that double stop stuff he did, that just changed my life, you know. Yeah, I and, do and I and I I love that stuff. And, but you know, as long as Tim Crouch is fiddling and <laughs> and uh, you know Stuart Duncan and did they play on did they play on this Tim project? Tim played on my project. Right, yeah. Well, Stuart played on my Live at the Station Inn right. record back twenty something years ago, and we played two or three songs from the project, but wow. I've never recorded any of that in the studio until this week. Oh, that's good. So this is a studio record, and and uh, we just had a great time. Tim Crouch played with me, Mike Bubb on bass, yeah, and no, Jimmy Stewart on dobro, uh, Corey Walker played banjo, and uh, Chris Henry played mandolin on everything. And he just brought a, a fire to it. And I love great. his feel. He's yeah. one of the greatest on earth. Is this, are you producing this? I guess I'm the only one that was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean that's cool, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, so I guess this is a project really near and dear to your heart, maybe more so than some of your more commercial records. Yeah, it really ha it, it really is, you know. Uh, and I, I think I'll tour a lot in Texas on this record, and I think it'll be a great bluegrass project too, because it's a full bluegrass band and. We'll get to play a lot of bluegrass yeah. festivals on it. I well, think. you're gonna play with the guys that recorded it, I guess. Sure, if, if I can, you right, know. Yeah, uh, I know how they goes. everybody's got their own stuff going on, yeah. but uh, it's uh, that would be the yeah that, be the goal. You now, know, and and so I, I guess the Lester's, which I call the it, the I guess I, that's the Cosman um, tribute band that could ever be. I Thank mean, you. You guys do and. I, I'm sure you've heard this, but you realize how much that uh, you sound like Lester Flat. I mean, well, I, I mean, I don't really sound that much like him, but I, I try to scoop my notes once in a while, to, like right. he did, because that, all that music, it, it adds to the tension of the of the song. You know, right. it's like it, it's a there's a there's a tension in there that if you don't do it that way, you're not doing it the way they did it, and I and so everybody plays off of everybody, you know. Sure. So we're all. Trying to do our part, you know, that's all. You know, I run this podcast out of Shelby, North Carolina, out of the Earl Scruggs Center for the most part. Oh, yeah. And, and um, you know, it's uh, I've had the good fortune to be around, fortune to be around Earl and Lester over the years. Yeah. You know, I'm an old guy, so. You ain't yeah. that old. I'm old. <laughs> Trust I never old. did meet Lester, but I, I was around Earl quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah. And Earl, Earl was a character. Mm, I, mean, I mean, he sure was. You also do stuff with Verlin Thompson. I do. Verlin's great friend of mine and we go and play a guy clark tribute yeah. together and i mean we do other th we do solo sh or duo shows where we just do our songs right. but most of the time when i'm with verlin we play uh, a guy clark tribute it's yeah. a couple hours long and talk about guy and stories you know and, uh, about guy and then play songs we wrote with guy or this just songs of guys you know right. so, uh, and it's a lot of fun and uh it gives a lot of guys Guy Clark fans closure to sure. you know uh, since he passed it's like uh, it seems to be uh, all of his fans want to come and, and soak up well, that, I mean, that much that's, that's that good. stuff I find the same thing with John Pine I, I actually play with a John Pine Handsome Johnny's which you oh, know yeah. it's, a, it's a um it's a John Pine tribute band. yeah it is and, it, and it's more about not so much Recreating exactly John, but the spirit of John. Yeah, we we drink, uh, you know, a handsome Johnny yeah. with us. You know, yeah. I mean, we make it. Brian taught me how to make that. Drink. Yeah, I was yeah. on the road with him a little bit, opening shows, you right. know, and and I, shoot, I loved him. He yeah. was a great friend and uh, a huge hero. Actually, I I I started hanging out with him because he was hanging out at Cowboy Jack Clement's studio yeah. where I hung out all the time right. and. Uh, uh, we went over there to, for Thanksgiving dinner one time uh, when I first met him and to John's house, right. you know, and uh, played poker. I remember I lost seven dollars playing <laughs> poker with him. I never would play <laughs> poker anymore, but uh, uh, he was just a great guy. And if you met John Prine, if you talked to him for a minute or two, you would think you just met your best friend. Yeah, he was nice just a, the real, most real guy you could ever want to meet. You have another project you're working on too. I did cut another project in the last month here, and just actually finished mixing it uh, with Dave Ferguson, who was Johnny Cash's engineer for thirty something years, and uh, it's a Johnny Cash inspired album and Cowboy Jack Clement inspired album. There's songs that feel like both of those guys throughout this did album. Write, did you write them? Or wrote them all uh, except one song that Marshall Chapman wrote. 
the day after Johnny Cash died I, called I know, Railroad Track. She's from Spartanburg. Yeah. I've known Marshall since she first started. She's so. a sweetheart. I love her. And uh, uh, that's the only outside song, but I told her 20-something years ago when I heard that song, we played it in the round at the Bluebird. Right. I said, if I ever do a Johnny Cash-type album, I want to cut that song. And uh, I finally had the chance to do it. That's so, really good because that many years later you're good at your word I mean that's, that's I'm trying to be you it's know, a, yeah. it, this music business will make you think you're never going to put another record out oh I do know that uh, I haven't put out a solo uh, project since 2006 which was a song or album called Fireball yeah that's a good but, that's a great album though well, thank you man it was just I just cherry picked a bunch of demos and put them all together that was really the album and I, I really it really wasn't the kind of project I mean the, the real the only uh, real album I'm really proud of is a uh, Lucky Silver Dollar yeah, album, I mean, I and that was uh, produced by Alan Reynolds and Mark Miller was an engineer, and sure. and, um, and that's a that's a good solid album. Those guys really helped a lot putting that together, and I, I'm really proud. I guess of you that. learned a lot from them. Didn't you? I certainly have, and uh, they're they're just salt of the earth, great people. That's great. What else you got going on? Got anything? That's a lot, but I mean, that's a lot on your plate. It's right quite there. a bit. I'm just touring around, trying to get through the dates I've got booked this year. I'm going to Taos, New Mexico next week, and uh, playing Atlanta the same weekend. And you know, that's just a big long trip between the two. Zigzagging across the country for, you know, that's booking agents. You know, yeah. I mean, that, my booking agent don't get me a lot of bookings. Truthfully, I they call me, and so I do most of mine. It's like if oh, I'm available, I'd go ahead, but. Uh, you know, uh, once in a while they'll, they'll land me a gig somewhere. That's, that's pretty cool. So. Yeah. Actually, Nashville's been good to you then. It has. It's been good and bad. You know, well, it's, it's always, it's, it's just way. like the way it is. You yeah, know, it is. it's just life, you know. It is. Just sticking it out and, uh, you know, well, just. I, I, will, I will tell you that um, I followed your career ever since you hit Nashville, and it has been a very varied career. You probably have as varied. From where where you came in to start to where you are now, it's just uh, I mean, you know, one time it one time it looked like you were going to be the straight up country star, you know. I I was thinking I was hoping that might be the case, but you know, uh, Warner Brothers we got sideways and uh, they wouldn't. Well, I cut an album with Emory Gordy Jr., yeah. uh, great producer, played on Elvis's sure records and and you know Emmy Lou's Hot Band and right. He's Patty Loveless's husband, and he's just a great engineer, great—I mean, great producer, and great bass player. And uh, I thought we did all right, you know. I had Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Quartet on there. I had Bobby Hicks playing fiddle, and, yeah, that's hot and I had a great Roy Husky Jr. playing some bass, and uh, just uh, James Burton on guitar, yeah. and it was really a great. And Patty Loveless was singing harmony on some stuff with me, and I was really proud of that record. And then. Uh, they wouldn't put a single out at Warner Brothers. And I said, well, then release me from the label. Right. And they did. And I thought my first producer, Mark Wright, told me that if I ever left Warner Brothers, he would have a home for me at DECA. Right. So I took that record over there and nothing happened. Nobody would bite it. And so I went to the woods and started writing songs and, you know, oh, I, making I up it, lies. I, I mean, I really think it turned out best. I mean, it kind of did. It's funny, it's funny how life unfolds and yeah. it unfolds different than any how you think it's ever going can't to. plan it man i've never really done any any good planning you anything can't really i mean i mean that's the beauty it's the beauty and and the sad side of music is, is you can't man. really plan it and it only happens one time man oh that's true really. you know i mean even the re the records you hear that only happened once yeah that's true and it's like um uh, it, they're never going to be able to do it like that again. No, and when you're out on the road, you're doing actually touring is great. You know, yeah. I, I've done it for a long time, but it's also the grunt work for what you did right. for your artwork. Really, right. it is. It is. You know, and it's hard to create that, recreate yeah. it live. That's right. So, now I thought your set yesterday, your solo set was just really good. Really, man, I was so out of tune. I couldn't get my guitar well, yeah, tune. Know, it was it's, killing it's, me. It's it's it's. it's you know, but thank you. Degrees and, yeah. and I mean, yeah. that's the outdoor thing. I mean, yeah. you know, I appreciate you taking the time to come by here and doing this. Oh, my pleasure, man. man. It was great. Thank I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you, sir. Right back at you.